Hi, I'm Hannah Brown, and welcome to Better Tomorrow. My absolute favorite thing to do is have a heart-to-heart talk with my new friends and my best friends, where we sit down and talk about all the things like relationships and love, faith, and self-care. And of course, the little things as well, like the struggle to figure out what to eat tonight. All in all, I really want to ask, how am I better today than yesterday and bring artists, entrepreneurs, and friends along on the journey? So join me on the journey, will you? other valentine that is so i love you i love you thank you because i really do believe so we're we're recording this on valentine's day hey everyone thank you for listening tuning in to better tomorrow uh nora de kaiser my best friend is here again i'm so happy that you're here but i also um wanted to make sure that nora felt special and loved today for me because i do feel like friendships are like one of the like greatest loves that we can experience in this life i agree and i just you're you're my other valentine you and i are getting like teary eyed right (laughs) now (laughs) because we've really like both been working on trying to understand like how we want to show up as individuals but how we want to show up in friendship and i think it's really hard to know what true friendship looks like because i feel like just like romantic love we sometimes can be fed a lie in our culture of what it actually is to be a friend and learning and being able to like grow with a friend and stumble and maybe fall short sometimes and then show up like that's So um, I'm so thankful that I have somebody that's, that's working on it with me. Yeah. And for me in a way to be able to serve me better and I can serve you better. So anyway, Happy Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> the note says my other Valentine. I love that. Love you. I love you. I made this. <laughs> I cut all those flowers this morning for you, but it kind of tried to Hannah! do my thing. But that's also one of my favorite things to do. So it was fun. Love it. Um, But y'all, I'm so excited that we we have Nora on again. So we had you on not too long ago, and I loved it personally because – I just obviously feel so comfortable with you and it was fun to be able to share just our dynamic with everyone. And it's a perk for me in our relationship and our friendship that you are a life coach. But I also think it's really great that somebody that I'm really close to can come on here and not just speak wisdom and life into me, but speak it into you guys that are listening. So I want to have Nora on more not only just to, for y'all to like kind of get a feel of like our day-to-day life together and kind of had that. I feel like people like listening to podcasts to kind of like eavesdrop on what's going on with the people that they want to listen to. So definitely have that going on, but also be able to utilize your value that you give to the people that you work for as a coach. And so I was wondering if you just like give a short synopsis of what it is that you actually do as a life coach and what type of questions questions can people start sending in and really utilizing this amazing opportunity we have with Better Tomorrow to have Nora come in, come on and share and help us as we try to like live our life a little bit better every day. I love that because everyone I work with is trying to make their life better every day. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're such good friends because we both do the work ourselves and we also love to help other people grow and learn Mm -hmm. and become more authentic in who they really are. That makes us both really happy. Um, So I'm so excited to be on the podcast more often um, and really be your guys' coach. I personally used podcasts as my own life coach from like 20 till 30 and still do but there was like a period of time where if I was confused about what to do in my life which way to turn um really who I was in general um I would go to podcasts and I would feel less alone and I feel like there was people out there that were searching or seeking in the same way I was um I do think there's other ways that you can gain confidence in who you are more than podcasts. This is just one avenue. So soak this up. I'm so excited to great, be your guys' coach. It's a great through first this step. Yeah. I think it's a great first step. Because y'all, life coach, like uh, deciding to hire and invest in a life coach is an investment. So this can kind of be like your T 
teaser and taste of what it would be like, not just to work with Nora personally, which you definitely could, um, but also just if this is something that you really maybe should invest your time, your money into. But I think sometimes it's great to just like know what it is yeah, that you're getting totally. in a podcast and being able to hear, listen into these conversations is a great little first step. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. So can you tell people just quickly, like you've been doing this for how long now? Yeah. Good question. And like, what is coaching? I hear yeah. that too. Um, because coaching is, is a newer industry. Um, it was created right after world war II. a bunch of psychologists, psychiatrists got, got together and they were like, okay, we are really helping people with more severe pathologies. So people who have more severe depression or severe anxiety or severe schizophrenia. But what about the person who's a pretty high functioning person that just wants to get to the next level of success in their life? Um, who's helping those people? Um, and so they created something called positive psychology, which is where coaching is rooted in and from. Um, and it's really based on people's values, who they are, who they want to be, how they want to show up in the world, where they want to go next, what are their goals. It's very future focused instead of past focused. Um, and past focus is a lot of times like what you would go for for therapy. Because I think yes. a lot of times it's hard to know like – What's the difference? Do I need to go to therapy or yeah. do I need a life coach? Yeah. Yeah. What would you say – what would you what would you say to somebody who is like questioning, okay, do I actually need a life coach right now or do I need a therapist right now in this season of life? Or heck, you probably need both. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say they work in tandem. Yeah. Um very synergistically. And so a lot of my clients also are working with a therapist or have worked with a therapist in the past um, that has gotten them so far. And then they get to that point, which is where positive psychology is really rooted as okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. How can I really be my best self, my most authentic self, which is why this podcast is perfect um, for people who are seeking and wanting to get to that next level of success or that next level in their life. Um, in terms of like how to know, should you go to therapy or coaching first? I personally, I'm so, I think this is so important, whether you're looking for a therapist or a coach, is to know why, mm -hmm. um, to really know what your ideal outcome is. Because so many people do go to therapy or coaching, unfortunately, and they're just kind of like, I don't know, I'm just here. Um, and then that might make you end up choosing a therapist or a coach that isn't the right fit for you because you weren't clear on what the exact outcome there is. There's so many wonderful therapists out there that specialize in ADHD or depression or schizophrenia or phobias. Um, but if you're just going to a general therapist, like, I don't know, I'm just here, I don't feel good, um, you might go to a therapist that specializes in phobias and it you're going to think oh therapy doesn't work for me mm -hmm. same thing with coaching you might really need help in your relationship life but you go to a career coach or a general life coach and you're like I don't know that didn't really work but what I would challenge you to do is get become your own coach that's what I do with all of my clients a success for me is when a client after six months or a year working with me they are so connected to their own self and their own values that when they do have any big questions that they're uh, or decisions that they're making in life, they're able to be their own coach and really ask themselves powerful questions to get to the answer. Um, and so similar when you're choosing a therapist or a coach and trying to decide which one is best for you, ask yourself that powerful question of, okay, well, if this worked, if I worked with this coach or th with this therapist for six months, what would success look like for me? What would the tangible outcomes be? Would I be in a healthy relationship? Would I know how to love myself? Um, would I be confident in who I really am? Would I know who I really am? That's what I originally um, went to coaching for. Um, would I have a dream career? Same with therapy. Would I have less anxiety? Mm -hmm. Would I be able to overcome this depression that I'm going through? Is it just a season or is it something that I actually need a prescription for? Like, there are so many ways towards healing and it's not one size fits all. And I think that's where the problem happens with coaching and with therapy is we don't know what size we want to fit, aka we don't know the outcome we really want to have. Then we end up getting frustrated either with ourselves or with the coach or the therapist when in reality it's more so, hey, let's just get clarity on what your dream is, what your outcome is that you want. And then find a therapist or a coach that specializes in that specific thing. Totally. And I think it's okay, like, to not know 
right off the bat, but it would be great if you did. <laughs> I'll say that. But I do think sometimes it's like, obviously, I know I need help, but if yeah. I knew how, I would I would figure that out. So sometimes you just need to start trying. And and hopefully I feel like a good coach is going to ask you and and make you learn and really investigate why you're there. Yeah. That's what, like what you would do is, and that can kind of help navigate. Okay. Is this where I need to be? Cause I know you've said to me, like, there's been a lot of times people would come to you and you'll be like, I don't know if I'm the best help Mm -hmm. for you. And you've gotten a lot clearer about what type of like ideal client you want to work with. Totally. And you can kind of tell us a little bit more about that. But I think, um, that's really important of just knowing like, and having somebody kind of be able to guide you of like, yeah. hmm, I don't know if I'm the best help for you. Yeah. And so what is it that you kind of ideally feel like you are the best to help somebody? Like what type of ideal client would you have? Oh my gosh. I love my clients. So I've been a coach for five years now. I started my business right after I left matchmaking. So I naturally segued into helping people with dating and relationships. And then through working with people on that topic, I realized it's not about finding the guy or finding the one. It's so much deeper than that, about finding yourself and finding out who you really are and being confident in who you are and knowing how to love yourself deeply. So that naturally attracted a lot of specifically women Mm -hmm. that were wanting to become more confident in who they are. Um, and that naturally seg- segued into women who were leaders, women who were founders, CEOs. I work with a lot of influencers on really knowing what their mission is in this world. And that is so deeply connected to what their values are, what they care about, um, who they really are. So it's usually people that are stuck in some area creatively, yeah. um, business-wise, Sometimes relationships, but that, again, is way more connected to their relationship with themselves and helping them show up authentically, show up powerfully, show up as a leader. Mm -hmm. So I love working with female leaders. That's so much fun. Um, And for anyone listening to this, if you're like, gosh, I'm not a female leader, I want you to know a female leader is a mother. It's a daughter. It's someone who's going to speak up about something that she's really nervous to speak up about. Um, It's someone who has a dream of writing a book one day. It is every one of us that has that little part of us that says, I really want to do more or I think I can do more and I'm scared or I feel stuck or I don't know how. If that sounds like you, that is my bread and butter. That's exactly who I help. And to like Hannah and I were just talking about, okay, some of us don't even know what we want help with, but we know we want help. The question I would, this is a coaching question. So write this down and think about this. The question I would ask is if you could take a magic pill. And have what you really want without any, like, you can keep this a secret. You don't have to tell anyone this. This is like your, your, your dreams inside your heart. If you could take a magic pill and have what you really want in six months or a year, what would that be? What would your life look like? What would your life feel like? What would it sound like? Who would you be around? Where would you be living? Um, let yourself dream very expansively. And that will give you some clarity of potentially what type of therapist or what type of coach or what type of book mm, good, will help you point. get towards that goal. I love that. I mean, we've talked about that, but I think that's a really good, like tangible advice for somebody that's listening to kind of take it for a first step. Yeah. So I'm glad that we kind of took a little time to actually like talk about how Nora can, you know, really help you guys. But also I want to like ride the line of being able to like see Nora as an expert and be able to have these type of conversations, but also she is my best friend. (laughs) And I do love that we can kind of talk about what we're personally going through. But I think because both of our lens is a lens for each, like for ourselves and for each other to like really help inspire and encourage and motivate through all the shit storms (laughs) that there are in life, but we're not going to pretend like our life is perfect or that we figured it out just because that is the lens in which we we hope to live. Like we still have our own crap yeah. that we're trying to figure out. And being really honest about that is part of this podcast for me. And I think that's important sometimes for people to know because sometimes you think, and I think we've talked about this, like you being a life coach, 
it can kind of feel like, oh, I have to shut down these parts of me because I can't let people know <laughs> that I still struggle. Or even for me as someone that's like trying to move forward in my life, sometimes I feel like, oh, if I keep talking or talk about this time that's hard for me or something I'm still dealing with, then like people aren't going to actually, I don't know, value other things that I have to say. But in reality, we're all equal. And as humans, we all are kind of going through the same thing. We have wisdom for each other based on whatever we've gone through through in the past. We can't just pretend like we've got it all figured out. So I want to say that before we kind of start going into life updates, talking about our friendship, what we're kind of going through right now, mm. because I feel like both Nora and I have had a lot of big, like just realizations, um, lately big in our ones. life, like huge ones. I feel yeah. like 2024 is going to be our year. I think so too. I think it really <laughs> is. And I'm so pumped that we can do it together. Um, but the last time we had you on, we were really pumped <laughs> about a new, a new guy in your life. Yes, we were. And we were so hopeful and you were going on a date, I think after, but you, I, Anyway, it was very beginning stages, but we were like, okay, this guy has a lot of the things that, you know, you're really looking for on paper, but can you give us a little update about that? Yes. Everyone sit down. British guy. (laughs) The British guy. Let's sit around the fire and talk. Uh, I do want to say one quick thing when it comes to like being a life coach and, and, and having these tools and you also saying, but we're real and we go through hard shit. Like we do. And I don't want anyone to ever think that if you work with a coach or if you work with a therapist, that life is just perfect after. Um, That's like thinking it will never storm. And Mm -hmm. it storms. Like, look at our world. The difference is you have an umbrella. And Oh, I love that. Like, I still sometimes am often, not sometimes, often, I'm like, oh, shit, this umbrella isn't working. I think I need a different umbrella. Or, oh, I forgot that I don't even need an umbrella. And I can let it rain. Mm -hmm. Um, So we hope that this podcast can help you guys not feel alone on your journey. Like you're sitting here with me in hand um, and you're learning the tools while we're also learning the tools at the same time. Totally. Yeah. I feel like, unfortunately, a lot of people don't have somebody that they can talk through yeah. the stuff with. And I hate that because I feel, and I've, I've had seasons where I have not same. had somebody to talk to and that's why I feel like this podcast also and like this, these type of conversations can really add value because it's two friends that are like, okay, yeah, I'm going to tell you all the like <laughs> shit that went down this weekend, all the mistakes that I made. But the other person that's listening isn't like, you know, trying to stir that up more. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah. me too. I've been there. And what are ways that, what can we learn from this? Yeah. How can we grow from this? Yeah. Like, how can I support you? How can I support you yeah. in whatever you're going through? Mm-hmm. Like that is probably a new concept. It was a new concept for me in friendship. Like I've had only like, I'm talking like maybe two, three friends in my life that have ever been able to like, kind of be there for me like that. And I know I'm lucky yeah. to have three. Yeah. So just want to preface that. And like Nora is, is obviously like one of those friends that I can like hear everything that she's going through. I can be like, wow, okay. <laughs> How can I support you? And right back at and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. And so we want to do that with you guys. So we're yeah. excited. Okay, okay. So back to the British, British. guy. <laughs> Last episode, I was very excited about him. I knew that it was new. So I was felt a little bit, to be honest, really silly, like telling so many people about this new guy. But that's what I would tell Hannah. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you guys too because we're all part of the crew now. Um, So what happened with him? Man, we – I don't even know how to answer. I Okay, I'll I'll back up a little bit to learn the lesson that I learned. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, The lesson I learned, and this was humbling, but we also – So you're not getting married. No, I'm not getting married. (laughs) And unfortunately, I'm not going to do any more British accents for you guys. Um, They were painful to listen to. But they, I, I also think they were pretty good. <laughs> no, that was so bad. No, it was so quite bad. bad. It's painful. <laughs> it's quite bad. Um, so what I learned, like the biggest lesson I learned is I'm a lover and I love all sorts of people and things and places and experiences. Like you could put me anywhere and I just be like, I love this because I just love experiencing new things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the same thing happened with this guy. I was like so excited and I think we just went too fast. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he did say to me like a week into knowing each other, he was like, I don't know what's going on. Usually I want to see someone once a week. I want to see you every day. And I could have been like, no, let's see each other once a week. But I was so excited too, because he did have a lot of what I was looking for in a partner. Um, but that's what happened. I realized I just went too fast. And I think after a few weeks of like really going that quickly, just like with what we were sharing and how much time we were spending together, um, then I kind of started feeling this anxiety come up of like, oh shit, like I actually don't know this guy very well at all. And we're acting like we are so close. Um, so now I have to almost keep this performance up, like keep this act up as if we are close when I don't genuinely actually feel that close with him. Um, and I shared that with him and we had a good conversation. I personally would have loved to continue getting to know him Mm -hmm. because I don't think it's a mistake to go too fast if you're able to have your bearings and slow down and say like, wait, let's slow down and let's get actually authentically get to know each other instead of just kind of sometimes when you're that into someone in the beginning, it almost feels like a drug at first. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like, okay, wait, let's slow down. He was like, oh, I kind of think you get one chance at this is what he said. Yeah, I know. I hated that. Yeah, I did too. I was like, okay. And I was really vulnerable. Like it doesn't feel good to say, hey, I'm actually still interested in getting to know you Mm because he also felt like something shift. We both kind of felt like, oh, shit, this is going too fast. Well, I remember um, talking to you about it. I feel like he was super – a lot of guys, because Nora is like so, I mean, she's the best. Um, but you you can be like guys either like they like fall in love with you instantly. <laughs> and he did that. Mm-hmm. But then he started to like pull away, pull a away. And that made you be like, I freaked out. You freaked <laughs> out because you're like, wait, what is happening? And I feel like that brought up your anxious. Yes. Patterns. Yes. Like super anxious and being like wait, why isn't this guy still like, like I'm the, cause you're usually the one that pulls away. I'm usually the one that's a little more coy and a little less like interested. Mm -hmm. Um, and they usually come to me. So talking in language here that Hannah and I are both learning about right now, um, of attachment patterns, I actually learn I'm more avoidant attachment. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're both avoidant. (laughs) Yay. And we're leaning towards secure. Uh, and so I attract people in because apparently we're also both learning this or I'm learning this, um, that when someone feels attraction for someone else romantically, it's oftentimes just anxiety. Yeah. And so when I lean a little bit more avoidant, it makes the guy feel a little more anxious. He thinks it's chemistry. He thinks he's like into me, but really he just feels nervous around me. Um, and with this guy, He also was, in my opinion, a little more avoidant, like hard to read, a little more reserved, um, quieter. And so I was attracted to that because that ignited, quote unquote, chemistry in me, but actually anxiety. It made me like, wait, who is this guy? And like, what does he want? And like, oh, I feel so excited. I also think we had a lot of values in common. So that that was totally, yeah. Both can be true. Yeah. I mean, the last... uh podcast I did with Adam we talked about like both Adam and I are super avoided Mm. and so like I definitely think and I feel like Adam and I have and are working towards an amazing amazing relationship so yes of course it can work yeah but two people both in both people two people both people wow (laughs) (laughs) choose one Hannah Both people have to like be willing willing to work on it. I don't know if he fully like his response was like, oh, we just get one chance. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, if we only got one chance, Adam (laughs) and I (laughs) would have been done after week one. Like that's that's just. And that's kind of what happened with me and this guy. And that's why I was I was sad. So first my anxiety came up because I was like, oh my gosh, this is just it, it was kind of a perfect storm of this anxious avoidant dynamic, Um, but not a storm in a bad way. I think it could have been totally worked through with clear communication and vulnerable communication, but he was not really interested in that, unfortunately. (sighs) So that's okay. There's more people out there. Totally. What would you say to somebody that like, what if you feel like you've learned from if somebody's in that same situation, like you did just really hear them clearly and had that conversation and like moved forward. But I feel like sometimes – 
girls, we don't get the, we don't, we don't get it. We and don't get the memo. Keep trying in yeah. some way. Yeah. Like, Which I have done. Yeah. You have done. Totally. Yeah. We're, people who are keep trying, no shame, right? Like we get why you've done it because you're lovers. Like you want yeah. love. Um, and that can create a lot of pain. So it was actually interesting when I did have the conversation with him. Um, we both acknowledged like he was like, I don't know what happened. Like, and I was like, yeah, I was like, I actually have a guess of what happened. Yeah. Um, and I shared exactly what I just shared here. We went really fast. And then I think on my end, at least, like I got anxious because I was acting in a certain way that I actually didn't feel authentic to be acting in. I didn't feel as close to you as I was acting. Um, and when he said that and then he said, well, I think you kind of just get we get one shot at this. I was like, OK, like I, I, I would actually disagree. Mm -hmm. I think you can work through this. Um, but I also honor what you're saying and honor that you're saying you think that we should go our separate ways. Um, he's like, yeah, he was like, and then he kind of backtracked a little bit, backtracked a little. He said like, um, there's a lot, there's not a lot of people that like have this similar values. So like, let's just keep it open ended is what he I said. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. And I was like, yeah, okay. Sounds good. Even though in my head I was like, nah, like I'm not, what do you mean open ended? You're not going to like text me at, at 2 AM, like you up, like that's not really what I'm no. doing. I don't know what open-ended meant to him. I learned what it meant to him. He texted me almost every day after just about like certain topics that we had been talking about. And I texted him back, but yeah, it wasn't like him courting me anymore or dating. And so I just kind of let that fizzle out. Yeah. As you should. So like y'all haven't been talking. I know no. he was messaging you like literally the day after. I was like, the what day is after. this guy? What is he? think he's I was doing but I was so confused because I so clearly vulnerably said like I would love to like yes this is uncomfortable and I would love to learn from this I would love to grow in this like but he yeah he had different plans I guess and it was weird because he said at first like okay like I I think we had one shot we don't this isn't gonna happen like it wasn't like he kind of kept it like super open at first but then like you said like he backtracked and yeah ew I don't know. I'm I'm over British guy. I yep. love a British accent, no. not his. Yeah, we don't need that. We're done. Yeah. And the beautiful part is, because I remember when I met him, I'm very spiritual. I talk to God all the time. And I was like, God, why are you introducing me to this guy? Like, you know, like, can you give me some signs? Like, we're always, I'm always looking for certainty in a very uncertain world. Um, And I didn't have a clear answer. I didn't quite know like, oh, is is he right or is he not right? He had a couple things that were a little bit different than what I'm looking for. So I just wasn't sure if I should really invest or not. Um, of course, that's what dating is. You explore the person slowly <laughs> yeah. to see if they align with you. But now in hindsight, I'm like, oh my gosh, of course, this is why mm -hmm. this relationship was gifted to me. Um, I learned so much about my attachment patterns from this dynamic because it happened so quickly. So I couldn't blame myself or him for really anything. What really happened is my attachment wounding was highlighted by him pulling away a little bit. And I got to learn about that and work on healing with that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I would have been as invested in healing some of my attachment patterns if this hadn't have happened because I have read all the books and I have read or done a lot of the workshops and trainings but there's still always deeper places that you can learn and you can grow. And it humbled me to say, hey, I don't know everything about yeah. dating. And I get to be a student. I get to learn. I get to grow. I get to heal. And so I'm really, I'm really grateful for British Man, even though it didn't work out. I am too for you. Thanks. So <laughs> uh, we, we kind of talked about this last week, like me and you personally. But are you like, where, where are you with dating? Oh, shoot. I have a text message I'm supposed to respond to. What this do you guy mean? invited me to this like Preds game. Is oh, that, fun. Is that the hockey yeah, game? Preds. Yeah. But I'm not supposed to be dating. So oh, just, you're not? Just for a little while. Okay. Like, just for like a few weeks. Um, so I need to think about that. <laughs> I'll figure that one out. So where I'm at with dating is British guy happened. I was – that was hard. That was – Well, I think because you had – you had learned a lot through some of the relationships that we had talked about yeah. in the last podcast we did. Like, yeah. And you're like, okay, like I'm feeling really hopeful about this. And like, I feel like I'm at a good place for something like this. And then it didn't work out. Yeah. And I think that, that 
that's painful because sometimes we have a plan of like, okay, I've done a lot of healing. So like this has, this is going to be it now. Like I'm going to like have this yeah. all figured out. Yeah. And it's like, uh, news flash, like you're not just going to like figure it out. Yep. Like it, you have to do that in relationship and with the, the exactly. right type of person. And sometimes it takes a while to find that type yeah. of person to be able to like really heal in relationship with. I love that you just said that because a lot of people think, especially with what I specialize in, a lot of confidence, a lot of self-love, a lot of leadership, a lot of going towards your dreams. A lot of women take that term, self-love, people in general too, thinking you have to be perfect before you meet your person. You have to love yourself fully yeah. before you meet your person. No, I am exhibit A, that you do not need to love yourself perfectly before you meet your person. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Me, yeah, you're, oh. you're both exhibit A. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm literally reading this self-esteem book and every day I'm like, oh my God, I have the lowest self-esteem. <laughs> what am I going to do? But I'm actively also like- Working on it. Working on it and working on, you know, creating a forever life with a person. Yeah. So- I'm having these aha moments of like, oh, I have a, sh a, a, a small little shrivel of self-esteem left. Let's build. We got to build that back up. And like, I, that doesn't mean I just like dump my guy and yeah. have to work and, and do that alone. Like yeah. you can still actively like be pursuing somebody while you're pursuing yeah. loving yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And as your best friend, I would say, I think you have more self-esteem than you realize. <laughs> you're just watering it. Yeah. You're taking yeah. out some of the weeds. Yes. There were some weeds that were covering up yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we enter relationships to heal. We mm -hmm. heal in relationship by moving towards that person and learning how to communicate and how to connect. And our friendship is that. Like yeah. I've healed so many of my friendship wounds in our friendship. 1000%. So we should definitely talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So I think I was at a point where I was following a little bit of the false narrative unintentionally that, oh, I've done this deep work and I know myself well. So now I am perfect and ready. And it's like, no, you aren't. And yeah. I had a big trigger come up and I get to love that trigger and learn from that trigger. So um, that was hard after British guy. Um, I, I, I went on hinge like shortly after just to numb yeah. a little bit before actually realizing, oh, wait, you can heal from this. Yeah. So not proud of that. I don't recommend that. <laughs> but I did that. And I went on one date with one guy. And it's been the slowest <laughs> dynamic with this guy. I'm not sure. And I'm also like really working on healing right now. Yeah. So um, that's the Preds guy that I need to decide if I should tell him like, hey, I'm just going to take a month and then I'll text you. I mm -hmm. think that's what I'm going to do. Um, I think rather than like forcing it just because he's asked me on a second date. Yeah. And I feel like if he's the right guy, he's going to really respect that. I would agree. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would totally agree. So one thing I think we've both been learning is like, there's so many different types of relationships and we can heal through, we, we heal through relationship. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't always mean like maybe that significant other hasn't like come along yet, but I feel like. I have healed and grown so much through having like a friendship that has really supported me and also like having another person like value growing and healing um, with like just the people in their, in your community and yeah. in your small group. Cause I think sometimes people can listen and be like, Oh, I don't have that. And it's like, you don't have to have that to start growing and healing with the people that are, are in your life. I have full body chills. Yes. And we were talking yesterday and I, I'm doing like listening to all these different podcasts and different workshops and things. And I was just called Nora and I was like, I just want to say like, I know we don't always get it right. We definitely don't, but it's so cool to like be learning these things about how to like show up for somebody like in true empathy instead of like showing sympathy in relationship. Like I feel like I've learned that probably the most with you, not even like me and Adam are obviously learning that now and like our couples therapy and stuff, but really being able to like when somebody comes to you and is like hurting and in something like doesn't mean I have to like mm, get in the hole with you, but be able to like fully support you. I never knew how to do that before yeah. our relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's been really healing for me because I feel like there have been times where I felt like shame and friendship and would block a lot of people out 
when I was going through something because I think I was hurt in the past by feeling like judged Mm. or not fully seen or like seen and then been like, oh, but I don't want to go there. But I feel like we both have really valued that in each other when we have felt like, oh, like my friend is really like in this with me. Yeah. I totally agree. And I also want to just mention for Hannah, you just said a lot of people are going through this journey with themselves and they feel like they have no friends that they can talk to about it. Mm -hmm. That's was me too before meeting you. And Mm -hmm. then one of my other friends, Emma and my other friend, Regina, that you are all more recent adult friendships of mine. And when I started listening to these podcasts and reading these books and really trying to figure out who am I and what do I value and what do I believe instead of being a chameleon, because I was a total chameleon in all my relationships and all my friendships, aka a people pleaser, just trying to make everyone else happy and not disrupt the peace and make sure no one's mad at me. That was like my end goal in all relationships, which is looking back, wait, what? What was I doing? But it was just what I knew. It's just how I knew how to relate to people. Um, so when I started shifting this pattern is when I started doing it by myself and a lot of my friends judged me for it. Mm -hmm. They would be mean to me about it. They'd be like, Oh, Nora's not drinking as much anymore. So Nora's not fun. Or like, Oh, Nora has to wake up to do yoga in the morning. She doesn't want to go out with us anymore. And it was just judgment and shame. And it sucked because it was like, I felt bad for wanting to change. Um, but now looking back, I realize when friends say that to you or judging you, Really, they're just scared that they're going to lose you. Mm, yeah. Um, they're scared that because potentially you're doing something that's mirroring back to them that they're not doing for themselves. Whatever it is that they're afraid of or scared of, and and that's the root of why they're judging you, it has nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. And so for people listening of like, they're changing, they might have some friendship conflicts right now, realize that person isn't actually coming at you to be mean to you and hurt you. They're probably being mean and hurting themselves and they're projecting it onto you. And my friendships really started changing when I started learning that specifically, that one piece of information that oftentimes when people are mean, they're just projecting their own insecurities. That helped me be free of the people pleaser pattern and then actually start showing up authentically in my friendships. Mm -hmm. And you were one of my first friends that I was really able to be like, okay, I'm not going to perform. I'm not going to please. I'm just going to be honest. Um, so I think that's how I've healed a lot in our relationship. Yeah. And we talked about this the last episode, but I think it's really important to note when you did start pulling away a little bit um, for random little reasons, instead of me then pleasing more or pulling away too, I leaned in. Mm-hmm. And I think that's such an important part to share because it's cool to talk about, oh, adult friendships and female friendships. but To go further from that is how, how do we have adult friendships and female friendships? And I think a big part is very clear communication. Brene Brown says clear is kind. Mm -hmm. So clearly say, I'm feeling this or I'm experiencing this um, and lovingly share. Caring. Yeah. Like really love you. Yeah. And I'm sharing this because I love you. And I, and I care about our friendship Yeah, and I want to have friendship. I mean, that's probably I was in such a weird place when we first met and like have been continuing to heal from all that, like really didn't and have struggled with like trusting people. So like, how can you build a friendships when you don't trust anybody to let them in? And I think for me, like when I think about what do I, what do I need in friendship or what has friendship looked like for me? It's really been people showing that they care in the good times, like when I'm at like Mm -hmm. my mountaintops and when I'm like in the depths of the valley. And, and that is having those clear conversations of like, Hey, I know you're going through something and it's making me feel hurt. And it's like, Oh my gosh, like I'm, and then realizing like sometimes when like we're hurting, we're hurting the other people around us and being able to clearly say, Hey, it literally has nothing to do with you. Yeah. I'm going through something and I'm like a little ashamed of it. Cause I think that's a lot of the issues in friendships is we'll get a little, we'll get like a little vulnerable. Like we've let the friend into, you know, parts of our lives, like the fun parts are the parts that we feel like, okay, we can put on um, 
our act for and like this is how a friend is supposed to be. I think we all have like in our mind, like what's a friend supposed to be? Supposed to be really fun, a person that um, shows up with a smile on, um, is ready to have like cheers to the drink, can take all the fun pictures, can like be there tap dancing. Like that's how I thought a friend was supposed to be. Like that's how I thought I was supposed to show up. Really? Friendship is so much vulnerable, more vulnerable than that. And it's being a friend is being able to be like, Hey, I'm calling you today because I'm like really struggling. Yeah. Yeah. And I just need you to like, I need, I need to tell somebody and yeah. I trust you enough yeah, to know that you can hold that and, and hold the weight of what I'm going through and like love and, and support me. And that's actually how our friendship is going to grow deeper. Like yeah. that thought that like, oh, my friend's actually going to love me more when I'm more vulnerable and show like all the parts of me versus thinking that my friendship is going to grow if I can just continue to like be smiley and fun and like always up for everything. Yeah. Like that actually isn't really deepening our friendship. Yep. Maybe is making for better better Instagram pictures and better Instagram stories, but it's not actually deepening no. the friendship. And it's not real Mm-mm. at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. And then you don't feel connected. You don't feel safe. You don't feel trusting. Yeah. And you don't have that. And I think just as we were talking about like in ro- like romantic relationship, it takes time. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes when we're looking for f- new friends, we can be like, if it's that first date with a friend, you're like, Mm, I don't know. Yeah. I do think we can trust that intuition a little bit. If like things, if you're not aligned in a lot of ways that you like view life, like, yeah, Yeah. maybe that's not going to be like the best friend, but you also don't like have to dump everything on a friend right at the beginning. Like trust, like learning how to like actually trust somebody is like a dance and it takes a little bit to learn the steps to do that. And I feel like that was definitely the case with, with us, our, with us. Yeah. It, it took a little bit for yeah. us to both let each other in and yeah. actually know what's going on. So I think that's something to really look for in friendships, like especially as an adult. And also we kind of talked about last time too, but one, I think it's important to reiterate, reiterate is having somebody that can like really show you where your blind spots yeah, are. Yeah. Call you out. Call, you have to be able to call you call each other out, but in a loving way, Mm -hmm. but that's where that trust comes in. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's really important Mm -hmm. to have like rooted first. Obviously it's something that like you continue to build, but a friend isn't going to let you like continue to live in a way that is not actually aligned with what you've told them. Yeah. What you've like trusted them of knowing is like your goals and your Mm -hmm. values. Like I think a lot of times we've both been like people pleasers in the past. So you feel like, Oh my gosh, I can't say anything that they might feel hurt. But actually like, it's better to like, feel like, Oh, that kind of hurt to hear the truth from somebody who loves you Mm -hmm. than from somebody who's not actually like choosing their words wisely and really is like wanting the best for you. Yeah. And Oh, we've definitely had to learn how to do that and yeah. we've both fallen short and then we've gotten it right. Yeah. And it's just like being able to have compassion for just knowing that we're both trying. Compassion for ourselves yeah. when we get that feedback, compassion for you when you share it or vice versa. Um, and I actually trust you more because you tell me the truth. Yes. I have a really hard time trusting people who can't like imagine if I wore an outfit and or okay, better example. I had like a piece of green spinach in my teeth and mm-hmm. I said to you, like, do I have anything in my teeth? And you were like, No. And no, then, no, no, you're good. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look no, beautiful. No, you look beautiful. You look <laughs> perfect. And then I walk the bathroom a minute later and there's green spinach in my teeth. I'd be like, Okay, something's not adding up. Hannah's not telling me the truth. Yeah. Even though it's awkward and that's to so say, many friends. I feel so like that's friends. a lot of how, you know, when you have like a lot of friends, like that's most yeah. of the friends that you quote, air quote friends. Yeah. It's hard to find somebody to be like, hey, yeah, I know you just took a lot of time with your hair, but I need to go back <laughs> and help you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think the the piece that's really important here is how you share that information. Yeah. Because I have had friends who do give me feedback, but it's really blunt and sometimes mean. Um, and that does hurt. Yeah. Versus like when it's like feedback out of love and they share that, I always say it's a sandwich sandwich approach. And I think this really helps like 
start with love, then give them the meat, aka, hey, and the, you look beautiful today. And there's a little bit of spinach in your teeth. <laughs> and there's a bathroom right around the corner. We can go there together and get it out. Yeah. Right? So it's like, give them love at first, give them the sandwich, the meat in the big, in the middle. And then at the end, more bread to say, we can do this together. I'm on your side. I love that. I'm so proud of us. Me like, too. Ge- like, like I said, like genuinely like called Nora yesterday and was just like, I, I'm just so glad I have a friend that I can like learn and grow and figure this out with. And we're also both like in an, a newer city. It's been almost a year for me. Nora has been here for like six months. Six months. And you know, I'm, I think having one solid friend is like, we're lucky for that, but how are we going to continue to build our community? And we're taking like, this is the kind of conversations that we're having when we're meeting new people and being like, okay, do they align to this? Do I feel like they really care about me? Do I feel like they're actually like telling me the truth and being able to like, show me my blind spots and doing that in a kind, loving way? Like those are the things that we are looking for in friendship and hopefully that can help you as you're trying to figure this all out. Yeah. We're going to do a few of your questions. I feel like I cut it a little short with giving y'all time to give me some questions today. I will try to do better about that next time I have Nora on so I can get more from you guys, but I'm going to do just a few of them that you guys sent. Um, The first one is what does it look like to love difficult people? Well, Example, annoying roommates. I had 10 roommates in college. So I... I had 11. We've never, no, talked, oh my gosh, about we've never that. talked about that. Yeah. So, which is funny because I wanted to like live alone right after, but it was actually really great because you have to deal with a lot of different mm-hmm. personalities. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like you learned through that Acceptance. experience? Oh, yes. Acceptance is so big for love. So mm-hmm. there's a difference between conditional love and unconditional love. And conditional love is... I will only love them as a person or as a friend if they wear this outfit or do this thing or have this belief. Unconditional love is, hey, I have a different belief than them and I still love them. Like they don't have to have conditions Mm -hmm. for me to love them. And I think also like boundaries is important. Yeah. And as we've kind of taken this whole like hour to talk about, it's like really having conscious communication. Like with... (laughs) roommates you're sharing a bathroom for example like it it is so easy to get so irritated by Mm -hmm. little things but a normal person if you like have a very conscious open compassionate conversation about like hey don't do this or this kind of bothers me sometimes when you do this and can we really be conscious of x y and z Mm -hmm. in the bathroom Mm -hmm. Most people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, thank you for letting Thanks me know. For, yeah. uh, totally. Yeah. That doesn't mean they're going to get it right every time. Yeah. But I feel like just having those kind of conversations and accepting them for who they are, because you're not going to change them com- completely. But there can be some boundaries that you communicate with each other yeah. that can really help. And for people who are afraid of saying boundaries, the example I always give is it's like when someone comes into your home, if you're the type of home where you keep your shoes on. Mm -hmm. then you keep your shoes on and you notice you keep your shoes on. If you're the type of home where, oh, actually we take our shoes off when we enter our home. That's exactly what boundaries are. No one gets upset when someone's like, oh, can you take your shoes off? Like we're at home that takes our shoes off. It's just the boundary of your home. Yeah. So same with any other dynamic in life. It's, oh, actually to have a relationship with me or to share a bathroom with me, this is how I do it. How do you do it? Let's talk about it. Let's meet somewhere in the middle. Totally. Um, The next one is how to maintain friendships after you all have children. Nora and I don't have children, but I do like one of my other best, best friends has three Mm -hmm. kids. And I will say it can be tricky sometimes because her schedule is so different than mine. And then I have a lot of other friends that they, that are friends with my specific best friend and that also have children. And when we actually talked about it, like it's, it's hard because you're trying to like raise other humans and it can also be really isolating being a mom. Um, but you feel like, okay, like this is just who I am now. So what we talked about actually very recently, me and some of my girlfriends who have kids is like, they're really trying to prioritize setting aside a friend a month 
that they really want to make sure that they connect with. So it's, it's an, a, a doable goal. Yeah. And like, for example, my best friend, Madison from home who has three kids, like she came up to Nashville from Birmingham and we got to spend a day together. Yeah. And it was so awesome. She brought her baby with her and it was the best, but like we had been talking about it for so long, but really being intentional yeah. about planning when you can spend time with your friends. And I think being really mm, gentle with what type of expectations that is. Yes. It's not like if we're being, you're not going to be able to talk to that friend every day. Yeah. Maybe not in, in every week, mm -hmm. but like once a month to really catch up, like that's doable. So yeah. setting like gentle expectations of what the friendship's going to look like in this season of life, but also being really intentional I about totally it. I agree. Okay. Last one. How to encourage and uplift friends who are obsessed with trying to find a partner. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. I would ask them what, what is underneath that? Um, what's their fear? What are they running from? And show them because oftentimes people think that if they have a partner, then they'll be able to avoid a certain insecurity or fear or pain. But if that person has a safe space where they can communicate about that insecurity or about that fear or about that pain, shame thrives in secrecy. Mm -hmm. So if the shame can be spoken to with you, it, what what this person is asking is, hey, how do I support them? You can support them by really seeing them and understanding them and giving them a safe space to talk about what they actually are feeling. Um then that will dissipate for them. It'll disappear and they'll feel a lot more whole and complete and safe with who they are authentically. Um, and then dating will be a lot more fun for them and a lot more exciting for them. I love that advice. I also think um, realizing that sometimes like being single and not having your person yet, like it can be a little lonely at times. Yeah. So being able to like validate that, but then also encourage your friend, like there's so many other ways that you can build connection with other people that's not specifically like a romantic partner yeah. and really being there for them in that way, but mm -hmm. also like encouraging them to get themselves out there more, not just so they can find a partner, but that they can find community yeah. because I have, we have a lot of friends that are single and actually like thriving, but it's because they learned how to build a community and that there are so many different types of love yeah. out there. I do think a romantic partner is important in I life. Agree. I, I really, I do, but I think that there are so many, like you can't just have a romantic partner and then yep. no friends yep. or no community either. It's both. It's at the both. Same time. Yeah. yeah. And so really focusing on that when, you know, are, are putting a little bit more focus into those other relationships that you already have and still being super excited and expectant for when that com comes, yep. but that can't be where the full focus yep. is. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was so fun. This is so fun. I love you so much. I love you too. I love having you on. We'll really work on like as you guys utilize Nora more on this, we can start catering our episodes to what you really specifically want to work on, work on and talk about, whether that's career, whether that's how to become a leader, and really just use and benefit Nora in that way while also getting to have updates on her life and our life and I'm just really excited and blessed I to have do. you. And thank you guys so much for listening. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you guys so much for listening to the episode. Better Tomorrow is produced by me, Hannah Brown, and Legos Creative. Our producer is Andrew Stalmer. Our show is recorded, engineered, and edited by the Legos Creative team. Remember to follow Better Tomorrow wherever you get your podcast so you don't miss the next episode. And don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps and shows your support. You can follow me on socials at Hannah Brown and you can stay updated on all things Better Tomorrow on our Instagram at Better Tomorrow and our TikTok Better Tomorrow podcast.